Hello, and welcome to our latest episode of How to Make a Pair of Women's Pumps. Now, uh, up to this point, we have uh, created our upper, and uh, now, uh, today, we are going to last it onto the shoe last and help to get its three-dimensional shape. Now, in this particular episode, um, we're going to learn a couple of things. Um, just uh, tips for the future, <clears throat> things to watch for as you go along. Now, first off, what I've done is uh, I found the center point and made a little notch here, if you can see it, uh, for the uh, uh, in the lining, so we can find that uh, top line um, when we go to last it on the shoe. And I've also done the same on the back, in that uh, we want to be able to get the right. Uh, height at the back of the heel. Now these are a couple of things that I did want to mention. Uh, these are just fundamental about shoemaking. Uh, the first thing is not to be cheap with the materials because as you can see here when I get this on I don't have a lost lot of lasting allowance. Maybe you can see that. There's nothing to come around there. So that's not good. So when you're making your pattern, uh, you know, don't be shy to give yourself a little bit extra overlap. It's going to be a certain degree of wastage anyway, so an extra millimeter or two is not going to kill anybody. Now that being said, the second thing you want to do is have faith in your measurements. We measured this. We were very careful uh, when we uh, drew it up. We were very careful when we uh, cut it out. So uh, I think what happened in this case is that I didn't really account for what would be a relatively thick lining material. Um, so, you know, being thicker, it's got to go around more material. But that being said, uh, I think we can still slowly work this thing to a point where it's uh, going to fit on there snugly and we'll be able to draw it around. So we shall see. But uh, in order to make things a little easier we're going to use some, some shoe stretch. Um, this is uh, shoe stretch. Uh, it's basically mostly isopropyl alcohol. <coughs> but I don't know what else is in there. But So anyway, we're going to uh, spray particularly the lining because we want to uh, be able to stretch the lining. The lining should stretch pretty good. And that'll uh, allow us to uh, last it onto the last. Okay, so and with regard to the shoe last itself, of course, we've got our insole, uh, which we covered. It's mounted, attached to the bottom of the last. I've marked here the uh, top line for the throat. And, uh, of course, I've got marked back here the um, uh, top line for the back of the heel. Uh, now, just for the ease of helping that leather slide along, We'll throw a little bit of baby powder onto the last itself. And now we're going to take our time and really let the uh, shoe stretch penetrate. Now you've got to be kind of careful because you don't want to get so much on here that you uh, stain the upper. But uh, that being said, I think the upper can take a fair bit of um, moisture as well. Now, of course, when we cut the pattern out, we went tight to toe, which uh, means pulling the upper lengthwise is going to be a little bit tough. So. But with the stretch, Going this way, it's tough to pull 
uh, forward on the last, but then the stretch is sideways, so when you're wearing the shoe, it'll have a little bit of give on the outside and the inside, uh, so it allows you your, uh, the, the shoe to kind of form to the foot or stretch a little bit if it needs to be a little wider with wear and tear and that sort of thing. Okay, so we'll put a little bit of baby powder there too. For those of you who may have made shoes in a more traditional manner in the past, this is going to seem a little odd. But I watched this on a, um, a YouTube video uh, for uh, Salvador Ferragamo. And uh, they had a craftsman making a pair of Ferragamo shoes. And in order to get it into place, he just did this. You want a nice straight line at the back. And there's my top line. So I just want to line that up get her nice and straight. Now again, don't be cheap with the materials. I want to tack a little tack in there, but I really haven't left myself much. Material to tack to. Okay, so I'm just using very teeny tiny nails here. They're one ounce. They're uh, hand shoe tacks, and uh, they're one ounce, and they're very very small. So I don't know if you can see that tack. Ugh. Pretty small. Let's grab the grab our lasting pliers and we are going to tug on this ever so gently and whoops so Okay, so now you bring it over, see how close you're getting to your line. And, and then we'll do the five one, two, three, four, five, roughly. And you know what your lasting allowance is, and this is not going to be a final lasting for these. Take a look at it. Coming along nicely. Think that looks good. Okay, not looking too bad. And we'll come back and we'll do this corner. Looks pretty good. So now that we've got our uh, side established and our inside established, and uh, we're happy with the top line, which we are. We are going to go ahead and tack the lining to the upper or to the last. And again, I'm going to go back to the little nails. 
the little tacks. This, again, this is the part I learned from uh, the Ferragamo video. I'll try to uh, give a link at the end of this video if I can. So every couple of millimeters or so, or maybe every centimeter or whatever, I'm going to tack a little nail in. Being careful not to catch the upper. And again, I could have left a little bit more material there to work with. So these are just things that you learn as you go and hopefully remember once in a while because I've been doing this for a while. But I guess the bottom line is there's no material that's worth more than your time. So taking the time to have to redo it is a pain in the butt and a waste of time. So give yourself enough to work with. So there's one side. We'll carry on and do the other. Okay, so there we go. We've got uh, tacks all around. Now the reason we're doing this is <coughs> uh, let me see here. The reason we're tacking the lining to the upper is because, and I learned this very early on, that it's difficult. Um, if you're pulling down to try to get it secure and tight, it pulls the top line away from the last. So by anchoring the lining to the last, you can come up, and when we go to uh, lasting our lining or, or securing our lining to the insole, we'll be able to pull on that and bring it right around and actually put a little bit of pressure on there, a little bit of strength, uh, without pulling the top line down. And then once that is down, then you can bring your upper down and you got a nice clean fit along the inside of the arch and that'll be the same all the way around. You'll get a nice pull all the way around. So, so what I'm going to do now is uh, uh, tack the, um, the lining in place. We're going to, this is what you might refer to as a draft last or draft lasting. We're going to get it on here and just let it sit overnight. So we'll just bring this down. Again, we're not going to go super hard. We're just going to tack it in place and let it dry overnight. Okay, so there we go. There's our uh, broged woman's up, uh, pump uh, as we've lasted it. So we've secured the upper and the lining to the insole and we've secured the lining to the last here in order to allow for uh, better pulling later on. So we're going to uh, move on to the other last and um, we'll see you tomorrow. Thanks a lot.